Gold has staged a spectacular rally in 2020, which has led to a strong rise in interest in gold exploration companies too. One of the most promising gold explorers we've been talking to lately is Longco Resources, trading on the TSX with the symbol LN, and not just because of its venture with industry BMR Barrick Gold. We're talking to VP Business Development John Barker today to hear more. Welcome, John. Yeah, thanks, Bjorn. John, when looking at an exploration company, the quality of management is of special interest. What is the reputation in the industry? What is the experience? Have they done it before, et cetera, et cetera? So please give us a short overview of the Longcore team. Yes, I suppose start at the top with the uh, CEO, uh, Arnold, or Arnie as he's known, Arnie Kondrat. He's been involved in mining, uh, particularly in the DRC for, um, for over 30 years. And he's built a number of companies in that, uh, in that country. The president, Peter Cowley, he's a, a geologist by trade. He's highly experienced and uh, successful in finding deposits, especially gold deposits in, in Africa. And uh, he's headed up teams that have found over 13 million ounces of, of, of resources in the DRC and um, 17 million ounces in, in some of the neighboring countries, such as Tanzania, while he was an executive with Anglo Gold Ashanti. So, so Peter, um, whilst he's the, the president, he knows the geology very, very well and uh, experienced very similar geology at the, what is now a, a mega mine of, of Gator in Tanzania and, and elsewhere. Um, Peter himself, he's, he's built a team on the ground. It's worked in the DRC for almost 20 years. It's not a huge team, it's an exploration team. But again, experience in the DRC and operating there and uh, know the prevailing geology. And myself, well, I was a mining analyst for, for 20 years and uh, seven years heading up the Royal Bank of Canada's global mining um, initiative. Then um, I took up a similar position to my role at Longcar, um, heading a business development with, with two TSX companies. One was Southern Euro and one was uh, Guinol. Both were in expansion phases and both grew and both were taken out. Um, and obviously, my, my role here, I've been with the company now for about five months, is to, to, to build up the profile of the company and uh, look at the various options going forward. So um, it's exciting times for us. To be sure, to be sure. Um, and uh, you already mentioned that uh, it's not only experience in the industry that's important, it's also in-country experience in the DSC. Um, because of uh, the geological settings perhaps also, but also um, because of the country risk, that which is for many German investors still a concern when talking about the DSC. Um, what can you tell us about doing business there? Well, of course it does help if you've done it for, for many decades uh, through many uh, changes of government, uh, you get to know people at all levels, uh, which is important to, 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 to make it work. Um, the DRC is an unknown to, to many. But I think, I mean, in my experience, I've, I've seen many times um, that a relatively new country on the stage comes along, a new deposit is found, it's mined, and then when the market's right, it creates a surge of interest uh, in that particular country. I mean, it happened in, in, in Tanzania after Gator was developed, a whole swathe of juniors followed on the, on the coattails of, of the gated development in Tanzania. It happened in Ghana after Ashanti became known and was listed. A whole swathe of players came through. And in Guinea, you could say the same with Siguri. So it happens time and time again that, that countries that, that at one time were, were not known, something happens as a catalyst and then uh, the, the, the country and I think the, the players in the area become, uh, become known. And benefit from that. So um, I think also to, to offer some comfort, I think as an investor uh, looking at emerging projects, it, it's good to see, for example, that Barrick, one of the world's most prominent gold players, are operating uh, arguably Africa's premium gold mine, uh, Kibali, only 220 kilometers away from us. That's in the DRC. Um, they found it, uh, rather when, when it, Rand Gold uh, found it, and then obviously merged with Barrick. And they, uh, they built it and uh, are now producing gold at record figures. It costs below $700 an ounce. So it's a, it's a real success story close to us. But beyond that, you're also hearing now um, Rob Friedland with his Ivanhoe Mines, increasing profile of a multi-billion dollar um, 
Kamoa Pukula Copper Mine. And uh, he believes that'll come into production next year, uh, earlier than expected. So expect uh, more and more news coming out and what they're doing of it. But other names that uh, people will be aware of, such as Tesla, who've just recently made an arrangement with Glencore, yeah. Ewa Cobalt, China Lebanon, Zen Mining. So the list's growing, of, uh, which I believe will, will just add positive focus on, 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 on how the country will be perceived. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to that. Um, also, uh, you mentioned Barrick. Now, um, one of the things that investors probably interest uh, about Longcore a lot is your joint venture with Barrick Gold, one of the behemoths, as I said, of the, of the industry. Please tell us about that. How did that come about and what does it concern? Yes, well, well, I mentioned uh, it's actually Grand Gold that uh, brought this whole area into Barrick when they merged with Barrick. So, the joint venture started over four years ago when, when Randall approached Longcore to, to joint venture on, on a large part of, uh, of our land package. We dominate an area called Ngayu, which I said is about 220 Ks from Kavali. And um, we have in total around three and a half thousand kilometers squared. And there's now a joint venture with Barrick over 2000 kilometers squared. So it's, I was going to say two thirds, not quite that, but uh, a large chunk of our ground is a uh, joint venture with Barrick. Um, and Barrick are looking for big projects. I mean, they're looking plus five million ounces. They, they, they talk about tier one projects, which is essentially plus five million ounce uh, deposits. Um, and they're looking for a project to complement their, their um, successful Kabali mine and, and, and piggyback off the infrastructure that they've, they've already developed there. Uh, the JV itself, well, well Barrick can earn up to 65%, um, long call 35%, once a positive pre-feasibility is approved. Then after, and, um, and up to that, they're funding everything, all the drilling that's going on, all the exploration that's gone in the past. They fund everything up to that point. So, um, and then uh, once a feasibility is put in place, then we have to contribute our percentage of the funding. Uh, through uh, through the full feasibility, so we're we're fully funded up until uh, feasibility, essentially. Okay, so uh, you mentioned that they have been uh, doing a lot of uh, exploration programs there already, um, and I think this summer they started drilling. Finally, um, any idea when uh, there will be results out from that and uh, what to expect there? Yeah, well, I suppose there's a major um, deep pockets. Barrick have been very uh, uh, methodical and, uh, and defining the, the key targets in what is a huge area. And, and after the four years of basic field work, um, they've now started drilling numerous tier one targets uh, that they want to drill. Um, and uh, initially they said it was tick six tier one targets, um, but that figure is fluctuating. We believe it's actually a higher figure now. Um, so they're currently drilling an area called uh, Backpile, and you can look at our website and you'll see the locations of these uh, areas. Uh, but it's an area that we believe with our history of knowing this area that uh, holds very interesting uh, potential. As I said, it's, it's early stage drilling with, with Barrick. It's what they call scout drilling. And where they try and assess the, the, the basic geological parameters. And once they have a handle on the, the geological parameters, um, if they're excited enough, then they'll go ahead and put more holes in. Um, we are beginning, obviously things have been moved around with, with COVID, but we're beginning with um, regular project meetings imminently um, with, uh, with Barrett. And so we should receive more updates um, on a, hopefully on a monthly basis uh, in the near future. And uh, if there's anything of significance that comes through, then uh, we will be uh, putting that out uh, to, the, to the market. Okay, yeah, very interesting. So we're uh, going to see what happens there. Um, of course, you said scout drilling, it's an, it's an early phase. So uh, what will happen then if, if they find an area of interest, they'll uh, switch to that and drill there more extensively and, and work further on that. Um, but let's say, let's look further down the road a couple of years, let's say, what, what would be the best case scenario for Longcore in this Barrick joint venture? And the other way around, what would happen if, uh, would mean for Longcore if they said, okay, um, this is a good project, but it doesn't uh, meet our criteria after all. Yeah. 
Well, I think you know we, we can look at the look at the long term, but I think in the short term, if they if they hit high grades and decent widths, um, you know, we've made it very clear to them we're a junior company, and and that would be significant uh, information which we would like to release. So there is the potential, of course, that. Uh, focus could be drawn to us if they, if they hit high grades and decent widths. Um, I think if they announce more tier one targets, that also would be, would be seen as positive. Um, but longer term, like any association by a junior such as ours with a world-class discovery by, by a, a world-class company such as, such as Barrick uh, would be positive for shareholders. And, and in the event that an area or a, a deposit doesn't fit Barrick's criteria, then it, it actually it falls back to us for free. So all the work that Barrick have done, so let's say it was a two million ounce and uh, for whatever reason, it just didn't fit them. You know, it probably would be below their, their criteria and then that would come back to us. So, and then depending on, we'd have to look at it, analyze and, um, and then make a decision what we want to do with that deposit. Um, it might be worth noting at this point that we have a 26% shareholder in Resolute Gold, the, um, the Australian uh, producer that mines in, in, in Africa. So <laughs> who knows, but, but they're there obviously looking at, at what we're doing uh, carefully as, as well. So there's a number of dynamics. It's, it's hard to say now what we would do with any project. And I think certainly my belief, you, you try and fill your hand with as many options as possible with, with anything that you have and then choose the right option at that time, depending on, on many things. But um, just to let you know, yes, uh, anything that doesn't fall into Barrick's uh, criteria falls back to us for free. Okay, well, so all, all the work they've done, uh, you, you get the, that information also. So it sounds like a win-win situation there for me, uh, in, at least in that case. I mean, if they uh, find a deposit, a tier one deposit that it's their criteria, uh, you will still be, uh, and they bring it to production somewhere down the road, should bring it to production, then you'll be there with a substantial uh, part of that. Yes. Um, however, that will be in the, at the end of things because you will have to, will have to uh, fund your part of the exploration program. And, and, and when you get to that stage, I mean, I've been through feasibilities numerous times. When you get to a feasibility, at that point, uh, it's very normal to uh, have a good handle on what the value is at varying gold prices. And of course, 35% of that value would be attributable to us. So um, yeah, I, uh, that's why I'm saying it should be very positive for us if you're associated with a major with a, uh, with a positive feasibility. Exactly. Okay, so uh, now we've been talking long enough about the, the Barrick joint venture because um, Lonco also has a ground of its own to explore and uh, also already has defined uh, just more than 3 million ounces of gold there altogether. Uh, please tell us about that and what have you found there so far? What did you discover? Yeah, yeah. so as you say, we've spoken about Barrick looking for, for Kabali 2, as we call it. Uh, but outside of the joint venture, uh, we actually control over 3.6 million ounces of resources, which uh, the majority is in the, in the inferred category. Um, and, and, and to be honest, this is where we're really starting to push our focus. Um, it's really just emerged in the, in the last 12 months, so a lot of this news. And before that, uh, there wasn't that much of a story, but uh, for a number of reasons, uh, again, if you, you look at our presentations, you can go into detail. But uh, this has emerged as a very exciting uh, development. This, this growth in resources, uh, and, uh, which we believe will continue, and um, importantly, I think it's it, the resources, while they, they, in many ways you class them as, as early stage, um, they are relatively high grade. Um, the one area you, you, you mentioned is IMBO, which essentially con 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 holds three uh, deposits, um, but it contains two and a half million ounces at 2.54 grams per ton of open pitable material. So if you compare that to the majority of, say, Ghanaian deposits sitting around one gram a ton or Egyptian or whatever, you'll see the majority sit closer to one gram a ton and we're sitting in the uh, mid two grams a ton. So th the key element is with, if those grades hold up, um, then uh, firstly, it's a similar grade to what Barrick is uh, mining extremely profitably at Kabali. And then secondly, it will be 
bottom uh, quartile for, on, on, on the cost curve, which is important uh, for whatever part of the cycle you're in in the gold mine. So this is why we're getting excited about the deposits at, uh, in the Imbo area in particular. But actually, our other deposits are also high grade, but, but our current focus is on the uh, Imbo deposits. Okay. So um, you said you, you want to grow that. Where, where is the potential for growth at Imbo? And are you already, work, already working on that? Yeah, so as I said, Imbo is a, is a large area, um, but one single uh, deposit in Imbo is the uh, Adumbi deposit, uh, which holds 2.2 million ounces. Uh, we hold just, uh, just less, slightly less than 85% of it, and we obviously control it. As mentioned, it's, uh, it's high grade and, uh, and open pitable as it stands presently. Um, we will imminently, uh, hopefully within the next week, start drilling a, uh, a fully funded 12 hole drill program to extend the resources at, uh, at Adambi. Um, initially concentrating on infill drilling. Um, we will, there's an area where we're gonna put four holes, which is right between areas that we've drilled before. So we're very confident about the geology. We just need to put more holes in there to, uh, to increase the density of the spacing, um, to put it into resource category. So we feel comfortable um, of getting resources from those first four holes. And then we're gonna drill deeper uh, below uh, the pit shell and uh, look at the sort of grades that we uh, will require to uh, potentially put a, a decline and, and uh, mine underground. And again, this is similar to what has been done at Kabali. And the, uh, the initial, everything that we see again, suggests that the grades underground are coming out similarly to, to Kabali. So we believe there is underground potential there as well. But outside of the areas of, of Imbo, where we, we, we have Adumbi and the uh, neighboring deposits, uh, we, we also have some early stage exploration, only nine kilometers away, which we'll obviously, see, we'll, we'll see how that, that goes, but very encouraging. And then other areas such as uh, Macapella, uh, which is to the north, which potentially could be brought into a mining plan in the, in the future. It's got three and a half kilometers of gold bearing ground, a resource close to 1.2 million ounces, a grade between five and eight grams a ton. So we need to put some further holes in there at some time. But our initial focus is the Imbo area, in particular the Adumbi uh, deposit drilling, the drilling there. Okay, good to hear. Uh, there's, uh, the drills will start turning soon, hopefully. Um, so let's say you did that, you worked on that. Everything went according to plan. Where do you want to be with the Imbo uh, in 12 to 18 months? What are your goals there? Yeah, uh, well, well, in the short term, uh, we would hope to push the open pit resource at, uh, at, at Imbo from two and a half million ounces, that's the three deposits, to closer to three million ounces. And that's a, then getting a pretty significant uh, resource in anyone's, anyone's books. Uh, then we'd look to possibly add in the region of, I mean, if everything went well, a million ounces of underground resources. Um, so we're looking at around 4 million ounces would be a, a target, if, as I say, if everything went to plan. We, and um, that sort of information we, we would hope to get out before uh, year, year end or beginning of next year. So that would be the sort of news flow coming out. Initially, the four holes uh, in the open pit area, um, giving an indication of what that looks like, and, and then leading on to the deeper drilling and then the resource calculation. So that's a flow of news for the rest of the year to the beginning of this, uh, uh, beginning of next year. And then we'd follow that, um, obviously depending on the results and depending on, on, on exact financing, uh, we would look to put in a, a scoping study or, or pre-feasibility study uh, to assess the early, early um, stage economic viability of, uh, of Adumbi in particular, but uh, the Imbo area. Um, and I said, uh, given the grades are similar to Gabali, if we could get similar to a thousand dollars an ounce um, operating margin as they're getting, we believe the scoping study could be very, very positive with, um, with four million ounces at a thousand dollars an ounce. So they're, they're starting to get into very large figures and hopefully quick payback given those uh, grades that we were, we were talking uh, about. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, again, it was finance dependent. Uh, we would look at drilling uh, the Macapella deposit um, and uh, increasing that one where we believe there is significant uh, uh, targets, uh, areas of, of interest to extend the resource. Uh, and, and then we have other deposits to, to, to follow up beyond that as well. So there should be a continual flow. And then of course, over the top of that is 
um, the, the Barrick uh, joint venture. Okay, yeah, yeah, it certainly looks like on the one hand, if you a lot of work before you also, but uh, there's a lot of potential uh, news, uh, positive news flow coming out over the next couple of uh, weeks and month. So uh, I will certainly looking forward to hearing more on that. Um, let me get back to, uh, to something I said at the beginning of our interview uh, that it's important to look at management, but it's also looking uh, when, when looking at exploration companies. It's also important uh, to know who are the major shareholders. Um, you mentioned Resolute Mining. Um, who's in there uh, to else? Uh, does management have skin in the game? Yeah, um, all key management, including myself, own shares, not just uh, options. Uh, so we're very much aligned. And the largest holder is our CEO, uh, Arnie Kondrat, who owns 26%. So uh, he's uh, very much aligned with, with uh, shareholders, uh, release some value. And as you said, there's, there's, obviously there's Resolute as well. And then we also have uh, Newmont in there as well, who are 7%. They were instrumental in the, in the early days, uh, almost, well, almost a decade ago, in uh, helping us target uh, areas in this huge area uh, of ground that we, that, that we have. So um, we, we, we believe we've got a, a pretty strong register and um, a very supportive register. And uh, it's, um, as I say, key management our owners of shares. Okay, thank you. So um, almost ticked, uh, ticked all the boxes. Um, just to sum up then, could you give us a short, in, in your personal opinion, a short summary of why should investors have a look at Longcore, consider taking a position in Longcore now at this moment in time? Uh, I suppose in many ways, going back to putting my analyst hat on, um, Early stage exploration is a uh, tough one to value. Um, perhaps in very basic terms, the, 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 the most common is uh, the market cap per ounce, uh, where you, you look at the, the market cap of the, of the company, uh, which is 70 million, and uh, you divide it by our resources. And uh, on that metric, uh, we look at looking at around 15, 16 US dollars uh, an ounce, a, a low figure. Uh, versus most of the comparables, uh, especially given our team's history in the DRC and um, you know, history of finding ounces uh, and the fact that we have an upcoming uh, drill program, um, we, we don't think the value is in it. Um, but I suppose a slightly more innovative way um, to, to look at it is you know, for, for, for $16, $15 an ounce, you're buying an option on us potentially getting a thousand dollar an ounce uh, operating margin like uh, like Kabali has. Yeah, so uh, you could say that's a, a cheap option, especially if you look at it that way. Not only are you, you buying an option on the on, on getting a huge potential margin, but uh, you're also getting thrown in free any news from the joint venture. You're getting thrown in free any ounces that we may find over the next. Uh, few years from our uh, uh, drilling at, uh, at the Dumby. So from my point of view, I, I believe it's a, it's a cheap option given uh, um, what's on, on offer um, from the company. Okay, uh, certainly makes a compelling uh, case there. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Um, we hope uh, all goes well and we'll be sure to uh, take a close look at how things are progressing and perhaps uh, after some results come out, we can talk again and you can give us your point of view on that. Thank you. Pleasure, thanks.